serves her daughter a tea from her registry gift from years ago. Gives her an old tin box safe for this talk that she's in above the stove. She says, You've got lots of time to settle down. Spread your She saw a thieves car lot that was most of the money gone. Then she spent the rest on a proper dress she needed to land a job. She says, We don't want a week to settle down. We got plans, me and my So how did it go from rock and roll with the pursuit of happiness um, and punk power pop country flavored Americana alt country, <laughs> for lack of a better word, for the um, the strap-ons, and now you're known as what did I read it as um, a married philoso funk no philoso folk band? Yeah, yeah. I um, thought. Okay, that's interesting. Philosophy folk. Yeah. Uh, I'd never even heard that one before. Um, I think made it up. The, the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, we talk about it all the time. We, we've written a lot of songs by the water. So mm. I think the water's got a beats per minute or it's got a, like you certainly, you know, get into the vibe. I don't know we both played in up-tempo bands and maybe there was a craving there to experience uh, you know to express yourself in a um not not in a balls to the wall sort of bpms 
know. Well, we, uh, yeah, we definitely, yeah, it's, it is kind of a, a strange path because we've stayed with it. We, you know, um, we've, we've, um, grown with it, I hope, you know, and expressed <coughs> in, in, in additional ways, but, but we have stayed, we've, we've kind of found our thing early on in our songwriting relationship and we kind of stayed with it. Um, I think that one of the things like on the technical side of things is, um, there's a sound in Dee's voice that I really, really enjoy. And it happens in a certain kind of timber and temple. And that is a very woody instrument. Mm -hmm. um, so we naturally sat around playing acoustic guitars um, to express that songwriting. And then it was like, it just kind of like, it was a very easy way for us to kind of morph ideas in that sort of in that vehicle. Um, and then later on, you know, we've got four albums out and they've become a lot more technical as things go along because of experimentation and stuff like that. But um, I think it's it's kind of like, you know, where we enjoy singing, what we you know where as a duo, that's a really hard thing. It's different than a singer songwriter. Being a duo is a really, a really different kind of a challenge. Um, well, you essentially need to learn how to breathe together, you know? Yes, you do. And um, you have to, yeah, it is it is very... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Riding it together. Yep. I, I, yeah, and all the inflections and, you know, where the line starts and ends, you know, to get those yeah. things sounding perfect together takes a lot of time. Uh, I think that's why siblings sound so good together. They're used to each yeah. other's inflections and stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. amazing. Totally. Nothing like blood. Oh, yeah. That's you right. have blood and you have love. Well, there you go. <laughs> um, so you've put out what, what are you on? One, two, three, four, five albums, you say? Um, we have four, four full albums, albums, full yeah. albums, four full right. albums. So yes. starting in 2011 with the debut and then going most recently to 2019. Yeah. Um, how was it putting out an album and then having the pandemic shut everything down and not being able to tour and do all that? How did that impact you? Well, we, our, our thing, our, our whole kind of musical story is a little bit different. Um, uh, not right or wrong, but just different for us in that, like, um, our life is what makes our music. Music doesn't make our life. So we, we don't, we're okay if it takes big pause. It's like, we're okay to live life because we just know that on the other end of it, music's going to kind of come out. Mm -hmm. Um, we're, we we do not um, we don't want it to be the other way around. So it's, it's very like, it's an okay relationship with our music. So when the pandemic, like we, we thought this record had, um, probably you always think it's your best record, but it kind of felt like it was our, we were kind of like really growing on this one. And then, and we have a band that we really love and, hmm. and uh, it was like, oh, we have this like really great band and we thought we would play a lot. Um, and so that was, uh, you know, it was a, a disappointment, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't the same kind of heartbreak that other people have. Like, we don't rely on it for our identity. Um, right. That's a very lucky position that, to be in. We are, um, we've worked hard on that. Like we, we've, you know, we've accepted the fact that when it's in our life, it's in our life big time. And when it's not in our life, it's okay. It just means we're living life and that we have faith that that, that our living life will bring music to us. Yeah. Yeah. We've we worked hard on that attitude. So it, that works, that genuinely works okay for us. Yeah. We've lost the, there was a phase for sure. I think where we were thinking, you know, with these pauses, you know, will you ever write another song again? You know, but it's just, happens it yeah, just happens. happens so there that, we've lost that insecurity and we just have 
just have faith in the process. And, and, you know, if you have any shred of humility in, in yourself as an artist, you've got to know it doesn't come from you. It comes from somewhere else. It might go through you, it might channel through you, but it doesn't come from you. So, you know, we can all just relax and just wait for it to, you know, hit and do what, do what you're inspired to do, I guess. And then the other factor is that we're both pretty introverted, like really introverted people. So um, we're okay not talking. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> oh, the stage is the most introverted place Oh, on yeah, earth it's, it's it's comfortable because it is introverted introverted but i mean we don't need to be like yeah conversing to you know all the time so we're okay if we don't if we're not if it's, music is it's the intermission pause. that's the hard part oh well, gosh yeah <laughs> that's a um that's a really interesting way to be living though you know it shows that you're practicing self-compassion which is something that i'm learning you know because i beat myself up all the time for not doing this or not being this or not my wife just says you know you can't right now, like, you know, today you've got this to do, you know, um, and because of this, that can't happen. And, uh, you know, just, just be compassionate with yourself, allow it to allow it to take a pause. And that, that mentality has gotten me through, you know, especially the last five or six years, um, dealing with, uh, you know, heavy life issues. Um, and yeah, I, I love that. Now I'm sort of at the place too, where it's like, I don't need to be chasing a dream or looking for record deals, trying to get radio play. I do what I want. You know, I mean, I mostly produce this, uh, this whiskey Wednesday show that, you know, happens once a week for whoever happens to be watching, you know, it's, it's, it, but it still kind of takes up my entire week to get this show together, you know, between the yeah. prepping for the show and then cutting it after for redistribution and getting ready for the next show and doing the interviews and learning new songs all the time. And then I kind of realized that the dream is here. Yeah. You know, I, well, in all the time I was on the road chasing the dream and living the dream and having a great time doing it. Now that I've been, um, you know, with my wife's health condition, I've been, we've been forced to basically been, be home now for going into five years, I think. And, um, you know, so I built a recording studio in my house. I built a television studio in my house with six cameras that broadcast this weekly show. And I get up in the morning and I take care of my wife with whatever she needs to do. And then I get an hour and I come in and I tweak some cameras or some lighting, and then I'll go up and do some mixing. And I don't have to leave the house, but I'm also not working on anybody else's schedule or anybody else's, you know, we need you to do this. You gotta be doing that. You know, it's just like, I'm like you say, it's just kind of, you get very, uh, very comfortable with accepting the pause and accepting when it's happening to be fully involved. That's a great way to be. Yeah. And honestly, why isn't that the dream? Like, I think, you know, and, and you said it, like there's, there is an inner dialogue that happens in our minds and we have to pay very close attention to it because a lot of the times it is not our friend. A lot of the times it can be very vicious things that are happening in our, in our heads and left unchecked, they damage but brought into the light and brought into our awareness, we can challenge it or we can say like, what, what assumptions are out there that, you know, I have to be this, I have to be that, you know? Yeah. Why aren't you living the dream? This is the dream. It's it, you're, you're so right. Um, my, my therapist once told me that, you know, my thoughts aren't real. So when you have a thought, no matter what the thought is, imagine picking it up and holding it and looking at it. So that's like turning on a light bulb in a dark room suddenly the darkness goes away yes. and then you can choose to examine it or you can, you know, she used to use the river analogy, said, or you can just lay it down in the river in front of you and let it go and grab the next thought that comes along. She said, but the key is remembering these thoughts aren't real. Yeah. Nothing in your head is real, you know, yeah. um, and it's, well, it's just electrons or I don't even know. I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not a scientist or a, whatever you would call it, who know about how the brain works, but um, you know, it's um, I find it fascinating. I I'm, I'm, I'm learning to, um, I'm learning to live my own life and it sounds like you both have as well. It's fantastic. Yeah, um, I, I, I think it's, you know, always a work in progress. Um, yes. That's all you have to accept as well. You can't be perfect at it. And, you know, just, just know that the path is a good path. Exactly. Um, we've got about four minutes left. Um, you have a big show coming up in March down in Kingston. Now, this is an interesting one. Um, should I For us, 
it's a really, really lovely opportunity. We're part of a like a local indie series that's part of a larger series at the Isabel Bader Theater. Um, yeah. An absolutely gorgeous, stunning, everything dream come true, beautiful theater with really lovely, lovely curation. And um, we uh, are part of that small series within a larger series. And um, we're playing, yeah, we're playing to kind of a dream come true situation where uh, people can come. The tickets aren't crazy expensive. They're, they're modest. Uh, the environment is amazing. And we're going to be able to give our best show we've yep. given the opportunity March to March 10th, 730. Yeah. Uh, tickets at uh, the Isabel Bader uh, Theater Queens at Queen's Union. University. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're playing songs okay. from all four albums. We have some uh, nice um, audio visual, some visuals. We've been working with our graphic designer to uh, uh, bring some eye candy to it. So, yeah. We're very excited to do it. Um, it's been so fantastic talking with you ladies and, and getting to meet you, um, Dee and Chris, to see you again. Um, I don't think our paths are crossing with the Watchmen and, and Pursuit this year, but um, we, we might cross paths somewhere else. So uh, yeah, I look forward to that. Always, I hope so. I, I would love that show. Yeah. Well, if you guys are ever up this way, um, you've got a place for dinner and a place to crash if you need. We're up here in Campbellford, me and the wife. You're always welcome. Come by. We'll hang out awesome. with some guitars in the backyard and have a beer and a toke and a swim and just yeah. hang out. <laughs> likewise, likewise in the Kingston yep. direction. If you're ever in K-Town. Well, know. my daughter's going to be coming back for university next year, uh, so I'll be coming in and out of K-Town, so I'll, I'll have to come oh, back. Oh, she go to Queens? Yeah. Yeah, she's just coming back to do her final year at engineering, so. Oh, oh good for wow. her. Okay, well. <laughs> yeah. Let's, she, let's make a date. She got her smart somewhere else, but yeah, we'll make a date on that. <laughs> Sounds good, Ken. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris and Dee on the Whiskey Wednesday show. Thank you both so much for taking the time. I look forward to hearing the acoustic songs and we will talk before too long. Sounds Peace good. Out. Thanks, Ken. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Okay. That's